This is Tanya Amisi. She's stylish, has expensive tastes, and travels the world. She's also thought to be funding it with benefits totaling hundreds of thousands of pounds. I've come to meet the investigators who are trying to catch her. Oh, hi, Richard. Mo Stanislas. Good, nice to meet you. <laughs> and undercover officer Helen. Mo and Helen specialise in investigating high-value fraud cases, but the woman thereafter is brazen and smart. This is her company, fake company, Le Chateau d'Or. That's her. That's her. Yeah. Tanya Amisi is a single mum who works on a minimum wage in a betting shop. At least, that's what she claimed. And according to this website, she's got a fashion well, house. Well, she's selling exclusive designer wear. Very expensive prices, so it shows that she's not being genuine with the information she's given. Tanya's life, which they found played out over the internet, suggests glamour and wealth, but it's a lie. She's a crook. They started investigating her after she was arrested for trying to cash false checks. The police found fake IDs and bank statements in her flat that showed large amounts of money being paid into them by councils across London. So within a few days of each other, we've got Westminster Council paying housing benefit, London Borough of Brent, Hackney starts paying her. They're yeah. big sums, aren't they? They're massive yeah. amounts. That's over th three and a half thousand pounds within a couple of days of each other. We tend to do multiple ID frauds, but hers um, is off the scale in the fact that she's manipulated so many different local authorities mm. and they're unaware of it. How much do you think she's taken just from looking at the file? 20, 30,000. And that's only a snapshot? A snapshot of a couple of months here in 2010. Uh, when we started to look further into it, we realised that they were live... We've got live benefit claims running at this moment in time. They found three housing benefit claims she's currently making in boroughs across London. It's evidence of a crime, but they need to link her to the bank accounts. Yeah, could all units just take up the original plot position? In London, Mo and Helen have started a major surveillance operation. Their target, a sophisticated fraudster Tanya Amisi, has amassed 13 fraudulent housing benefit claims using false identities. They want to see what else she's been up to. Tanya's doing pretty well for herself. She lives in Chelsea, one of the most expensive areas in the country. Yes, yes, back to you, Visual. The team has cancelled most of her housing benefit claims, and this morning, one of the few councils she's still getting money from has called her in for a meeting. So we have a feeling that she may turn up in order to get paid. Yeah. Um, and if she doesn't, my feeling is that she's got other claims that we haven't um, located as yet. Away away from the stand and through lights on green. Yeah, just to confirm that Lima 2 is now uh, in the vicinity. Yes, yes. Yes, She drops her child off at school, but instead of going to the council for her meeting, she goes back home and stays there. She must have something else up her sleeve. The local authority investigator, benefit assessor, has called her and when she's asked to speak to Tanya Westwood, the person on the phone line is, has turned around and said, who? And then she said, oh, yes. And then the 
the phone has gone off, so the SS has called, made an attempt to call her again, and it's gone to answering machines. So we'll just sit tight and wait to see what happens. Yes, yes, Lever 1 has the uh, visual. Over the next three days, they're going to try to find out if she has any accomplices and see what bank card she uses in an attempt to link her to the fraudulent claims. Yeah, she's crossing the road towards her own shopping. The loss of her housing benefits doesn't seem to have affected her much. She's on the upper level in Nando's. Yeah, she's on the upper floor. She's held at a bus stand across the road from Howard. Please don't tell me she's going to Harrods. She's going to Harrods. We're shopping in, um, in Harrods. Yes, <laughs> subject is now walking through the cosmetic section on the ground floor. Yes, yes, she's walking through the children's designer section. She's got a few bags. Her son's got a bag. They've been um, having a great time. They're yeah, relayed in, in, in to the cinema. The surveillance links Tanya to the bank accounts being used for fraud. The investigation also throws up another bank account they weren't aware of. This is um, a fraction of um, Tanya Westwood, Tanya Meese's claims um, that we've got from some of the local authorities in London. It's three months on and they've now built up a fuller picture of how Tanya operates. Whilst we were out on surveillance, she had actually had a live claim in the borough, in the borough of Newham. It transpired that she took out a tenancy agreement with a private housing association. She then further sublet the flat to three other individuals, took deposits from them, and they were also paying her just over £500 a month rent, each of them. On top of that, she went back to Newham Council and claimed housing benefit. By stealing the housing benefit and then subletting the flat, she was making up to £3,000 a month on a single property. It's a scam, she repeats, over and over, and always ends the same way. The tenants get thrown out. It's become obvious that this is her thing, this is her, her MO, and this is what she does, because it's easy money. She obviously don't care about people's lives, she wrecks people's lives. As long as her life is OK, she uses it to buy designer clothes and she uses it to show off on the internet. You know what? I'm looking forward to getting arrested. It would be just nice to say that we've shut you down yeah. and you can't do this anymore. And, you, you know, we're, we're not going to allow you to get away with it. With a mountain of evidence against her, the plan is to arrest Tanya Amisi in the next few days. Tanya Amisi, the woman with multiple identities, has been arrested in her Chelsea flat. This interview is being recorded. Can you please state your name? Tanya Amisi. She looked a little startled, but I think even though she was startled, she remained confident, because I don't think she was 100% sure what it was all about. So far, Helen and Mo have found Tanya's made 37 claims from 22 councils, and used four different identities to get them. Well, you've given your details today as Tanya Amisi, and you weren't known by any other names. Tanya Amisi or Tanya Westwood? Any other names apart from those two mm -hmm. that you've been using? Mm -hmm. Now, you're known by a number of aliases, including Tanya Amidi and Becco Amisi, Tanya Amisi, Tanya Amisia, and Tansi Amisi. Why would the Home Office have those details for you as aliases when you've told me the only two names you use are Tanya Amici and Tanya Westwood? I have no idea. Initially, the beginning of the interview, I think she was very relaxed and very cocky. How do you support yourself to live? You can find out. I don't know. No comment. You don't know how much you pay rent? You should know, isn't it? But I'm asking you, you a question. Ask, I'm telling you no comment. We put you under surveillance last October. We followed you. So why are you claiming money for an address where you don't live? So when we brought out the fact that we actually did surveillance on her and we followed her, um, she didn't say anything, but there was a look of shock and horror on her face. 
that we actually followed her numerous days to see what she was up to. She realized she was in trouble. With Tanya under arrest, her flat is searched. It provides an eye-opening insight into her lifestyle. When we were searching her bedroom, she had um, nearly every designer bag you can possibly think of. She had a Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, um, YSL, Givenchy, Dolce & Gabbana, um, every bag you could think of, high-end bag, she had them, and they were just thrown at the bottom of the wardrobe. These bags are estimated to cost more than £20,000. Barclays Visa debit card, Santander. They've also found seven credit cards linked to three different identities, as well as two Congolese passports. This passport is full of visas yeah. for the Ivory Coast. Brussels. Brussels. This is a visa for America. Egypt. Morocco. Oh, frequent flyer. A very yeah. frequent flyer. Um, well, what else has she to do? She's not working. Um, she was getting money from various different sources. It was all free. So what best way to spend it other than holidaying and shopping? While she was at holidays, on mm. holidays, she went to the Prada outlet. You can see that she spent over 2,000 euros. I've never encountered anybody that we've ever arrested or investigated to have amassed so much money and um, goods um, that's been funded by the taxpayer. But they don't have Tanya in custody for long. She's got a small child and her lawyer manages to get her out on bail with a tag and a list of strict conditions. later and it's time to face justice. Tanya's been summoned to Crown Court. It was listed for hearing at 10 o'clock but she didn't attend as I understand it because uh, she has been to the hospital. I have concerns when someone who's charged with being in possession of a false passport uh, not turning up at court that I want to know it's a genuine appointment with a doctor or a hospital because for all I know they may be on a flight to a foreign country. The fear she's done a runner is well placed. Tanya has cut off her tag and vanished. She skipped bail, so we're not sure whether or not she's in the country or she's out of the country. However, my colleague has requested some bank statements, her bank statements, so that we can see if she's accessed her accounts. Mo and Helen hope to find Tanya by tracking where she's spending money. On the 11th of February, she purchased some Eurostar oh tickets. Gosh. Yeah. And she, it looks like she appeared, left the country on the evening on the 11th. On the 12th, she was booking herself the hotel. into the hotel in Paris. So when she was due in court on the 13th, she'd already left the she country. She was in Paris. She was already in Paris. You can see then her other transactions are in, in Paris as well. And she's moving onwards. And then as of... 17th of March, 2015, Brussels. she's booking herself into the Sheraton in Brussels. £294.96. You're never going to see her again, are you? Ah! Well, there's a, an arrest warrant out for her. It's, it's, it's not quite over yet. Tanya Amisi has fled to Belgium. It's been decided to put her on trial in her absence. Prosecution is going to present its case to the jurors, um, and the defence will do his best to defend her. Mo and Helen think they've found Tanya's address in Belgium, and the trial is part of a plan to bring her to justice. If she's found guilty in, in her absence, then we can get a European warrant and then bring her back. You know, she wants to stick two fingers up at everybody by leaving the country before her trial. So I think, yeah, there are the occasional cases where you do feel a bit more 
and determined then that they face justice. She showed no remorse, but she lacks any contrition, nothing. There was just nothing there. She just didn't care. The trial, which would have normally taken three weeks, lasts four days. Oh, God. Oh. Well done. We've had the verdict and it was unanimous. She was guilty on all counts. She's been convicted of 17 counts of housing benefit fraud, nearly a quarter of a million pounds stolen from the public purse, enough to put her away for five years. I've applied for what's called a European arrest warrant, uh, and that means that um, the warrant will be sent to the Belgian authorities and hopefully she will be arrested um, in the near future. Just a bit of a waiting game, but hopefully we won't have to wait too long once we get the, um, the warrant circulated. Bringing Tanya and Misi back to Britain for sentencing hasn't gone smoothly. Despite all the hard work, it takes weeks for the warrant to be processed. In that time, Tanya moves on. We've done some research, used it, some in investigators to sort of have a dig and see what we can find on the internet effectively. OK. I want to show you some of the stuff that we've found. So, Tanya. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, it makes me feel sick. Honestly, it makes me feel sick. We think that shows her in two places, in Istanbul, mm -hmm. Turkey, and yeah. uh, back in the Congo. And putting stuff like this on her, on her Facebook page. She's very bold. I, mean, I, just, I, just, I just can't believe it. Oh, she's it? teasing us. She's saying, well, look, here I am, and I'm still doing what I do. We've done all that we can do, and the rest is up to the police and the rest of the justice system, of which we have no control. Tanya Misi only came to the attention of the authorities because she was arrested for something else. That's right. Um, you would never have known about her? No. So, so how many other Tanya Misis are out there doing the sort of fraud that she's up to? There could be hundreds. But Tanya was convicted and she's on the run. One slip-up and she'll go to jail.